Welcome fellow golf enthusiast. In this video, we'll uncover the secrets to unleashing your true potential on the golf course by mastering the art of hip movement during the golf swing. Get ready to revolutionize your game as we delve into the mechanics, techniques, and timing that will help you harness the power of your hips and achieve effortless distance and accuracy with every swing. The hips are an integral part of a dynamic and powerful golf swing and when properly engaged they can translate into improved ball striking, increased distance, and enhanced body control. Today we'll explore the critical role your hips play in generating torque, maintaining balance, and ensuring proper weight transfer through the swing. We'll also break down some common misconceptions and mistakes that could be holding you back from unlocking your full potential. By the end of this video, you'll be armed with expert knowledge, practical exercises, and invaluable tips that will help you cultivate a hip-driven swing that delivers consistency and power. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insightful golf content and performance tips. Exercise order is the sequence that exercises are performed during your training session. The order that you do your exercises can have a significant impact on how fast or how slowly you make progress. This is because exercise order affects the speed that your body will adapt to a training program or movement sequence. For example, in hip coil secrets, the mobility drills are done before static stretching. I did it this way because most golfers are really stiff and there needs to be blood flow into the joints, tendons, and ligaments in order to get the most out of a static stretch. If done in the opposite order, the breaking mechanism or muscle spindle would be more active because of the lack of blood flow, which would cause you to essentially fight yourself during the movement. Additionally, exercise order can impact the efficiency of motor learning or muscle memory. For example, performing a complex exercise that requires significant coordination and skill at the beginning of a workout session when you're fresh and focused can help you learn the movement pattern more efficiently as opposed to doing it later in the session when fatigue and distraction may interfere with motor learning and the development of proper muscle memory. Hip coil drill number one, the alternating leg drop. If you have ever had lower back pain, this is the drill that will fix it 80% of the time. Studies have shown that 80% of lower back pain is due to pain in the SI or sacroiliac joint because just about every muscle in your legs and hips affect the SI joint, it can get locked up and painful very easily. When you add in tight or weak muscles, old injuries, and poor muscle memory, it gets even worse. For most golfers, SI joint pain is a real problem and causes compensation patterns in your golf swing 100% of the time. The drill is simple. Lie on your back with your knees bent and arms out to your sides. Slowly lower your right thigh to the side while keeping your left knee pointing up. Pause at the bottom for one second and then slowly lift your right thigh back to vertical position. Repeat on the left side. Do 20 to 50 repetitions total. Do this drill before and after you practice or play. Hip coil drill number two, lying hip circles. If your hip joints are stiff, you will not be able to load your back hip during your backswing. Back hip means the hip that is on the same side as your backswing. For example, if you are a right-handed golfer, this means your right hip. And if you are a left-handed golfer, it's your left hip. If the joint capsule in that loading hip is stiff and immobile, you will have major problems. And here's how. Instead of pivoting and gliding in to the back hip and loading the big powerful gluteus maximus muscle or your butt muscle, you will lock your right leg and your hips will turn from east to west. Notice the position of the belt buckles in both of the golfers in this picture. The golfer on the left is east to west while the golfer on the right 
the belt buckle is still pointing toward the ground. The east to west hip turn happens when the hip capsule is stuck, the hamstrings are tight, and the butt muscle is weak. The belly button and the chest are pointing in the same direction. This means no hip coil. In the north to south position, which is the figure on the right, the belt buckle is still facing the ground. The chest is pointing east to west, and the belt buckle is pointing north to south. This is the essence of an effective hip coil. The seated 90-90 hip twist is another drill in the hip coil sequence that gives you sneaky flexibility. The tensor fascia lata muscle, along with the gluteus maximus, are what allow you to load your back hip. Do 30 to 50 repetitions total to get this area primed for a good hip glide and pivot. Hip coil drill number four is the lying figure four hip twist. This is an amazing drill because it develops what I call sneaky flexibility, meaning that through the process of slow, gentle movement, you can essentially trick the muscle to loosen up very quickly. In this case, we're loosening the hip rotator or the piriformis and glute muscle. So when you combine the figure four position as you conduct your lumbar rotation, you get a double impact drill that affects your ability to load the back hip on your backswing and also increasing the ability to turn from the torso and your shoulders. The kneeling groin stretch combined with the hip decompression allows for effective loading of the hip on the backswing. It helps engage the powerful butt muscle to generate more speed on the downswing. The groin stretch targets a short, dense muscle. To isolate and stretch this, the hip joint must first go into flexion and external rotation. This position tends to compress the hip capsule. So doing the decompression glide in between the reps helps to keep the joint happy and helps to minimize soreness. Hold the stretch for 15 to 30 seconds and then do 20 to 30 decompression glides. Hip coil drill number six, kneeling quad stretch. This stretch targets the upper part of the thigh muscle. When this muscle is tight, you are almost certain to have a lower back injury and lose power in your golf swing. And here's why. Tight quads will inhibit or shut down the glute muscle so you won't be able to load your back hip effectively. Also, when your quads are tight, you won't be able to release your hips at impact, which means that even if you do happen to load your back hip, you will not be able to release the power into the ball. Tight quads keep you from extending your hips at impact and follow through. When you can't do that, you're forced to try to swing the golf club harder with your arms, which puts the lower back at risk for getting injured. The kneeling quad stretch helps to fix all of this. Hip coil drill number seven, the seated pretzel stretch allows you to get new results from an old exercise. The seated pretzel stretch is like the Vanguard 500 index. It produces consistent returns year after year. The IT band or iliotibial band is a pesky piece of tissue that affects just about every part of the body. It can easily be linked to most problems related to golf swing mechanics. This is for the simple reason that the hips are the core or center of mass and the IT band has control over the hips in all three planes of movement. If you are really tight, the key to success in this exercise is being precise with your posture and positioning. You'll hold this one for 30 to 60 seconds. Drill number eight, the cigarette butt stretch is by far the most difficult move for most of my golfers. It gives them the most trouble because it requires skill and positioning in all three planes of motion at the same time, just like the golf swing. This drill is like confession because it tells me all that I need to know about three important factors. One, it tells me about your golf swing mechanics. Two, it tells me the degree that you're compensating to make a golf swing move. And number three, it tells me your potential to improve your hip coil, swing speed, and overall distance. The good news is that when you get this drill to at least 80% accuracy, it is almost certain that you will get a better hip coil during your actual golf swing. 
hip coil drill number nine, standing hip circles. This drill primes your nervous system in preparation to make a full and functional golf swing. This seemingly innocent looking exercises has a few very important technical details that will have powerful carryover in your ability to make an effective golf swing and a powerful hip coil. So pay attention to the details. Allow your hips to circle around your head with very little head movement, tracing the outer edges of your shoes, staying balanced in the process. Movement is not only medicine, movement done in the right order and with the right intention can and absolutely will improve golf performance. The hip coil sequence is no exception. And if you follow the plan as outlined here, I have no doubt that you will see the benefits of increased power, swing speed, and distance.